All right. Welcome, everybody. Let me turn down the music a little bit. And I actually don't want to kill all my audio for the whole stream. Just lower the music a bit. Let's bring that audio back up. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to 2021. Today is January 5th. At least as of the date of recording, I know some of you will be watching this on YouTube. And, uh, hey, how you doing, Trash Man? Uh, we've, we're doing good. So we've, we've made some changes in our mentality around here. Um, we're not going to give a shit what the, uh, the laws say. That's, that's what we're going. We're on pirate radio. Um, yeah, finally made it, right? Um, I know you don't get an opportunity to, to visit by much, so uh, I appreciate it anytime that you can, man. Uh, so today we are flying out of Cairo and we're heading to Beirut. This is a requested flight. Um, we should have Dawn start showing up just about the time that we leave. I'm gonna turn on external power. God, I haven't done this in so long. Uh, I need my checklist. <laughs> I haven't done this in ages. And I'm sitting here trying to navigate with the wrong thing. Uh, I need my checklists. Pop out because I cannot do this by memory at this point. It has been... Far, far, far too long. <clears throat> I'm still getting used to kind of my new setup. So, nice, but one question. Where's Beirut? It is in Lebanon. So, if I can... Let's see. I'm going to see if I can't make this an overlay real quick. Uh... Add a source. And then I want to do a window capture. No. Oh. Yeah. Window capture. Window capture. I'm going to create new. All right. So I'm going to real quick show this off. We're going to go to um, Google Maps. Beirut is right here. So we're flying from Cairo to Beirut, which is right about here. And on second thought, I probably could have done that without doing this because I have a, an EFB <laughs> that I could have looked at but uh, I'm dumb so I did it the absolute stupidest way uh, and then I gotta find Here is the one I just made There we go. Sorry, I'm not used to having to shuffle things around quite this much. Never played this or seen anybody play it. Well, it's very realistic is what it is. <laughs> so uh, it might be a little dry to start off. Because uh, all I've managed to do so far is turn on the batteries. Uh, so we need to make sure that the, uh, the fuel pumps are all off. We're going to test the APU fire system. Oh, that is nice and loud. I hope you guys can hear that, and I hope you're not deaf after trying that. Um, APU start on. I'm going to wait for the flap open message down here on my lower ecam. I'm going to look for flap open right here. Meanwhile, I'm going to turn up some lighting. Because it is real early in the morning in Cairo. I'm hoping to get us off the ground right about at dawn. It is that close. 
All right, flap open, APU start. And the APU is our auxiliary power unit. It's basically how we start all the other systems of the aircraft. And then we turn it off because we don't need it again. Uh, cockpit lights and McDo's, we're setting all that up. Okay, I'm pretty okay with the rest of the cockpit. Is it possible to fly off course? It's absolutely possible and I do it all the time. <laughs> Sometimes it's even on purpose. Uh, usually uh, it's not on purpose, or it's because I missed a, uh, a turn or I missed a descent, and so I have to turn around and go off course. Uh, but when I do that, I either have to fly by adjusting these manually. Uh, this will change my direction, this will change my altitude, and this will change my speed. Or I have to hand fly it, which I've absolutely done, and it is fun to do. Uh, it's not something you would do very often in an actual airliner, but this is a simulator. We do what we want. Uh, okay, so speed brakes are retracted. Probe and window heat uh, is set to auto. Uh, APU bleed on. That has been so long I've forgotten everything. Uh, air conditioning panel, no white. Uh, cross bleed set to auto, external power off, um, electrical panel, all other lights off, ventilation panel, all lights off, end of the preliminary pre-flight checklist. All this stuff sounds like a chapter in a sci-fi book where the author has to explain everything in the second chapter. And you're not wrong. All right, so these are the way that the plane knows where we are. These are our, uh, what the fuck's it called? It's, it's, I forget what the AD stands for. IRS is the, is the inertial reference system. Basically, it tells it how it's moving, which compel, combined with where it started, tells it where it is. Um, basically, a, 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 pre, a, a precursor to GPS. Uh, strobe lights set to auto, wing lights on, nav and logo will go system one today, we haven't flown in a while, seat belts can come on, and then our no smoking signs to auto and our emergency exit lights are armed, landing elevation set to automatic, <clears throat> pack flow, uh, I think we've got a full load of people today so we're going to go normal, I don't imagine that it's terribly humid since we're flying from one desert to another. Fuel pumps can come on. Uh, engine one and two fire test. Uh, this all makes perfect sense. It it does after a while of doing it. Uh, hearing it for the first time, it is all gibberish. We're gonna look down here and turn on our second and first radio. Okay, radios are on. Now we get to play around with our McDo's. These are our navigation computers. <clears throat> and I turned that one off instead of selecting it. All right, so we're gonna go to initialize. And on this one, we're gonna look at data. So we need to see our GPS. All right, we're going from Heka, which is Cairo, to Olba, which is Beirut. Uh, flight number today is going to be ACA0021. It is our first flight of 2021. Uh, and then we need to set where we're actually at. So we're at 3074. So we need to go up a little bit. And then longitude, we are at 3123.4. 3123.4. We can align our IRS. Somebody hit that button. I did not quite see what that was. Ice Rise, thank you so much for the follow, my dude. I appreciate seeing you come by here. Okay, now I need my flight plan real quick. Uh, it's going to be hard for me to react here to you guys for a minute while I'm setting this up. Uh, where's my current flight? Where's, where's my current flight? 
Current flight. There it is. Okay, they moved it around on me. All right, so my cost index today, which is basically just a comparison of how much money we're making to how much money it's costing, that determines how quickly we, we try to ascend. Um, cruise flight level today. Ah, fuck. Where was that? I know it's up here. 350. We'll load our winds. And then we're going to set up our flight plan. Okay, so our flight plan is going to be to take off from uh, Cairo. We're going to be on 05 right with no instrument departure. Then we're going to go to Degdi. And from Degdi, we're going to jump on an airway. This is basically like jumping on the freeway. So we're going to go via Alpha 16 to Meldo. November zero, uh, 307 to Lacto. We're going to head to Velux. And then we're going to jump on our arrival. This is actually working better than I expected it to. Okay, so we're going to come in on 03. RNAV 03. I'm going to take the Elec 2 November. Elec 2 November. No via. No trans. And so if we remove this discontinuity between Velux and Elica, let's take a look at it on our map here. Map not available. Not nav, plan. All right, let's zoom in a little bit. Velox, Elica. Oh, that looks perfect. Okay. So let's go ahead and set that back into arc mode. We'll insert. Flight plan's done. Go back to initial reference and open our ISCS screen. This is something that you'd have a you'd have like a flight bag in the actual aircraft that has this information. I just have to kind of set it up as best I can. All right, so we need 144 passengers. We are one passenger shy today. And 100 kilograms of, uh, of cargo. We need 5431 kilograms of fuel so we'll take 55 we're going to take off with flaps one all right so our zero fuel weight is going to be 55.3 kilograms and our center of gravity is going to be 28.3 this way we don't strike our tail on the way out uh, our flex temp, which I only somewhat understand, is 66 degrees. What? How is that out of range? Oh, clock fuel. 5.5 huh, tons. And then we're going to go to our performance page. And that's where this stuff goes. 151 for our V1. That's when we have... That's the last speed that we will be at at which we have enough runway left to stop. Uh, our rotation speed is also 151, which means up until the point we take off, we've still got enough runway to stop. So we can reject takeoff at any time. Um, V2 is going to be 153. That's our safe climb speed. Uh, flaps are going to be 1 slash up 0 0.2. So that's going to be 0 0.2 degrees up. Um, basically, it's going to be trying to nose me up a bit. 
Uh, and then the flex temp. This is the thing I don't really understand all that well. Is 66 degrees. Uh, so we're going to head over to the progress page. And that's that setup. Okay, perfect. That's McDo's done. Which I think means I can grab my OBS so I can actually see what's going on. Uh, I was really disappointed when my stream got cancelled because I missed the stream before it. It was one of the few days I was going to be free to watch Twitch. I'm so sorry, man. It's just... I was burnt out, especially dealing with all the... There, there was a... Part of the, the whole spending bill um, that happened in the United States was... Um, had to do with copyright. And platforms that share copyrighted material including video games would be subject to um felony charges now it's not designed to attack people like me but depending on your interpretation of platform you absolutely could come after someone like me because technically this is my platform it is a platform so they could come after me which is why we're going pirate radio and saying come at us if you if you can um but yes at least you did make it to this one um which is perfect uh i'm glad that you were able to uh so to, we're gonna set our altimeter which we're gonna go to thirty-five thousand feet i'm not gonna worry about actual procedures too much flight directors are both on that's this it'll create a little crosshair here that kind of tells me how to turn the plane when i'm flying manually uh speed is dashed managed mode heading is dashed it's being managed by the navigation computer um altitude is set to atc cleared oh right uh i need to set my altimeter my actual altimeter i got the wrong thing uh let me look at the toolkit will tell me what my weather is and currently we are looking at 1020 wait is that future or current That's current. Okay. So we need to switch to hectopascals. 1020. Perfect. All right. Altitude set. Uh, anti skid and nose wheel steering is on. Switching panel is all normal. Transponder. We call ourselves. 0021 today because I can turn it on beacon light can come on and we are ready for pushback so we need to look at our live map and see where we're at because I don't have the uh, I don't have all my which columns my charts downloaded for Cairo come on load in I need to turn this light off here for a second because I need to be able to see my other monitor There we go. Okay, we're taking 05 right. So we are absolutely on the wrong side of the uh, airport. That's going to be fun. Um, I'm actually going to real quick grab this. And I'm going to turn my chat on on this so that I can actually see it. I'm gonna real quick look here, see what I've missed. Oh dear. I'm gonna check here and see what I've missed. I think I saw me in an Deering Chaos stream. Yeah, definitely. But I was not. I was not in it. Um, I I've never appeared on Endearing Chaos's stream. I've just been in there as a mod. Um. Okay, looks like I haven't missed much. Okay, so I'm gonna keep that open on my desktop. And we're ready for pushing back. 
So we're gonna plan our pushback. Which we're gonna go. Route of cockpit, plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you are ready. All right, and go ahead and start. Cockpit. Toe is driving up. Turn this back on. And then I'll pull up my map so that I can navigate properly. All right. So we are about ready to get started. You can see the lights are starting to come up just a little bit. We're starting to get a little bit of daylight. So it looks like I'm not entirely off on my time frame. All right, and they're lifting us up. I'm actually going to take us out and let you see. are closed ready to connect so it's gonna just take them a minute to be ready to lift me and these are legitimately what most real-life tugs look like um, they are really heckin weird I'm just gonna say that out loud Of course, it's not quite this automated. <laughs> Here, they look damn near automatic. Mission failed. I was on the wrong track. You're not wrong. Um, we're literally going to have... To, I can actually show you here on so connected and this map, and I think. Release parking brake. So... Starting pushback, and you may start engines. Oh, come on. So we're right here. We're taking off over here. <laughs> All right. So we may start engines. Engine mode to ignition. Starting engine two, which seems weird, except for that's the uh, the the engine that powers the pneumatics that function the brakes. So that's something important to have access to. I forgot to turn the TV volume down because my COD two game is blaring sound and you could hardly hear me. Hey, man. I am not going to feel bad about coming in second to COD, okay? Performance matters. Alright, start. I, I'm a little late on starting that timer, but... We're looking for about 19% on N2, or N1 rotation, engine 2, and then we'll start engine 1. And that's a positive start. Engine two, starting engine one. And it's gonna turn me very violently because it thinks it can. it now and it's flying time just about we've probably got about a, a five ten minute taxi at least um Operation which is complete. unfortunate that parking brake parking brake set disconnecting tow stand by all right engine one positive start uh, engine mode over to normal. Uh, APU bleed off. Uh, ground spoilers armed. Flap set one. Pitch trim set up 0 0.2. All right. Uh, engine wing anti ice is not needed. APU master off. Disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal will be on the left. We'll see you next time. Have a safe flight. 
Okay, Hansen is going to be on the left. We're just going to wait for this guy to jump out. He'll show us the little flag that's connected to that that gets connected to our uh, nose wheel gear, so that we can't turn while they're pushing us back. All right, nose wheel light set for taxi. Uh, parking brake off. Elapsed time run. Flight control check full left, full right, full up, and full down. Everything looks good. FMA, which is right here, should show nav and climb. Auto brake, we're going to set it to max. Not that we don't have plenty of time to do this. Train on ND. We're going to call the cabin. Make sure they're ready for us. And then we're going to gently increase throttle. And you get to hear my Discord going nuts because it's not in streamer mode. And I have now figured out why it should be in streamer mode. Wait, which, am I heading the wrong way? Uh, I think I might be heading the wrong way. I am absolutely headed the wrong way. What the hell? Okay, we're going to do something we're absolutely not supposed to do under any circumstances. But we are going to do it nonetheless. Okay. There's differential braking. Normally we would not do that. I'd probably back taxi on the runway. But I don't want to have to temporarily shut down the airport. My computer's doing the same thing with my, with your Discord. Yeah. Um, I'm going to see if I can't turn on streamer mode. gonna do I'm gonna completely quit discord start it again discord will once again not realize that it needs to be on the other screen and then streamer mode is enabled perfect all right so our speed limit is gonna be about 31 or 30 knots on the ground you can see that right here where it says my GS ground speed. We are very, very heavy today. So it is taking a fair bit of thrust to get us any momentum. Slow it down just a little bit. I do want to stick around a nice happy 25 to 28 knots. I don't want to go any higher than that. Especially given the fact that I'm going to have to make a hard right here in a bit. And we've got some fog, so that's not ideal, but it's what's happening. Thankfully, we've got our um, cockpit fully configured. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the dome light. 
And then let's turn down these integrals. And then down the floods quite a bit. And this is exactly why you're not supposed to look away from the taxiway while you're taxiing. Actually, the exact reason is because uh, you can hit another aircraft. <laughs> and that's a little more important than you getting off the line a little bit. Every time I'm in a plane, it always goes so fast, but here it's going slower than my pet turtles. Well, see, here's the thing. It looks a bit different when you're looking at it this way. It looks a little bit faster when you're looking at it as a passenger than it does from the front. Because you got to remember, we're about 30 feet off the ground doing this. Um, so from the front, it's not going to look like nearly as much of the ground is passing. So I think 25 knots is probably, I don't know. Um, Thirty miles an hour ish. And for some reason it's slowing down. And I really, really don't want it to be slow. Oh no. Sorry for uh, spilling your drinks back there. Um, all right. I do have a thing that I'm going to play for you guys. All right. Let me, let me cue it up. Let's see if I can't find it. I'm going to pause that real quick. All right, I'm going to try and play this. I don't know if it's going to work. Oh, the crashes don't work all that well in this. Uh, you want DCS for that. Thank you for choosing to fly your rack cat this evening. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind you of a few things. Our AV system isn't working today, so we can't show you the $2 million safety video that an ad agency did for us. But since very little of what that video tells you will actually save your lives, I'm going to do it instead. Here's the big thing to remember. If we crash or make an emergency landing, Statistically speaking, 95% of you will survive. If it's a serious crash, 55% of you will survive. So if this plane is going down, concentrate, because your life may depend on some smart decisions. Keep in mind that 80% of accidents happen within the first three minutes and last eight minutes of flight. So that's when it would be wise to keep your shoes on and put your laptops away and stay focused. The safest seats on this plane are over the wings closest to the emergency exits. If you're not in one of those right now, here's what you can do to help ensure your survival. Look where your nearest exit is. Now count the rows between you and that exit. If the cabin was full of smoke, or upside down, or full of smoke and upside down, how would you get to that exit? Take a moment to visualize yourself doing that right now. Now look at your seatbelt. I know all of you know how to use it, but that's because nothing is making you lose your shit right now. 
It's common for people in emergency stress situations to try and open that thing by pressing a button that's not actually there, like the seatbelt on your car. So take a moment to imagine yourself lifting that flap in an emergency. In fact, do it right now just to get used to the motion. Emergency evacuations on the runway are more common than crashes. In the event of something like an engine fire, we need to get you all off the plane in about 90 seconds. This means you need to leave your fucking bags in the overhead bins and get off the damn plane in a quick and orderly manner. Those bags will bring the evacuation to a virtual halt. My first officer and I will be trying to get off this plane and the last thing we want is to be cockpit blocked by your roll-on. Now, you're probably well aware there's a life jacket under your seat, but forget about it. They're less likely to save your life than those little airline pillows. Sure, there was a famous 2009 emergency water landing on the Hudson, but there were boats on hand immediately and nobody actually needed the life vests. There was a flight that ditched in the Caribbean in 1970 where 40 lives were likely saved by the vests, but there was also one off the coast of Ethiopia in 1996 in which many passengers put them on too early and couldn't get out of the flooded fuselage. To put it another way, if we replaced those life vests with a box of chocolates, it wouldn't alter your survival odds. Let's take a second to talk about those oxygen masks. Here's the thing. If we lose cabin pressure at a fairly low altitude, no big deal. You can breathe just fine. If we lose cabin pressure at cruising altitude, you can't. If that happens, here's what I'm required to do by law. I'm going to push the nose of the plane into an emergency descent that's going to feel like a roller coaster drop and it's going to scare the crap out of you. But it's not dangerous. I've practiced. Also by law, I need to notify air traffic control as well as the airline, and I need to do all that before I can get on the microphone and tell you what the hell is going on. So don't be surprised if you don't hear from me for a bit. I'm just doing my job, and you're going to be fine. For those of you who don't manage to get your masks on in time, you'll probably pass out and then wake up in a minute or two when they get the plane to a lower altitude. You want to know what the biggest danger is? The biggest danger is actually that your luggage or those duty-free bottles you purchased and put in the overhead compartment will fall out when you open it and hit someone on the head. There are actually several thousand reported injuries from this every year in the United States alone. By contrast, the FAA only reports 58 or so serious injuries from turbulence. So one could easily make the case that we should, we should be handing you a helmet and skip the seat belts. Another big risk is the drink carton. Seriously. It weighs over 100 kilos when fully loaded, and every year passengers get their elbows, knees, and feet broken when the drink cart slams into them. So keep your arms and legs tucked away. Why haven't airlines put some safety padding on the drink cart? I don't know, maybe because you keep screaming at the attendants for your chicken being bland or your drink not being cold. Same goes for spilled proof coffee and teapots and cups with lids. Every year, some poor passengers get hot coffee or tea in their crotch when there's a bit of turbulence, but until the airlines fix this, I'm afraid you're on your own. Now, you're probably wondering how can this bucket of bolts stay in the sky if we can't get the AV system or the latch on your tray table to work properly. To be honest, we sometimes wonder that as well. But the stats speak for themselves. The actual risk of dying in a plane crash is 1 in 11 million, according to the Harvard School of Public Health 2006 study, so you're far more likely to be struck by lightning or killed by a shark. And it's certainly much safer than driving. Right after 9-11, many were scared to fly. 12 to 20 percent fewer people flew. But because more people made driving trips instead of flying, a German professor estimated that an extra 1,595 people died in car accidents in the year after 9-11, just in the U.S. Just a little reminder that we'll probably keep the seatbelt sign on for nearly the entire flight, because our flight crew doesn't want to be bothered in the galley, and they definitely don't like trying to squeeze by you in the aisles. That or I forgot. Either way. Anyway, please sit back and relax while we take forever to serve you a drink and a barely editable meal, and then leave the tray on your table, making it nearly impossible for you to squeeze out of your chair and into the toilet. Looking forward to flying the salty skies with you again. All right. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I would also pay quite a bit in order to fly 
on an airline that actually played that. Um, there are airlines that do something similar. Uh, I think it's Thule Fly. All right. Let's turn the engine sounds back up. All right, we need our runway turnoff lights on. Landing lights on. Nose light to take off. We're gonna start. We need to advance our throttle up to about 40% and stabilize. All right. Flex. Sixty knots, eighty knots, B one, rotate, positive rate, gear up. Four hundred feet. Autopilot one coming on. Shuttle to the climb position. All right, ground spoilers can be disarmed. Nose wheel lights off. Weight turn offs off. Flaps can be retracted somewhere around 200 knots. You're getting tickets for Thule. I don't care where it goes. I would love to hear. They are smart asses. I will give them that. They are absolute smart asses. Uh, they're the ones, if you've ever seen them, they've got green planes that have shit written on them, like this side up. Uh, they're just general smart asses. All right, so we're about to pass 200 knots. Speed checked, flaps clean. Engine mode is normal. Engine anti-ice is not necessary. Landing lights can be retracted at 10,000 feet. We're only at 4,000. We got nothing to do until then. All right, perfect. We are on our way, folks. We had the weirdest... Um, <laughs> Yeah, um, that's actually, so I'm, I'm going to be honest, right? Like, I, I performed that, but the data was all sourced from another video on YouTube. Um, so I don't want to try and steal, you know, anything from them. Uh, but there was some information that was kind of, I wasn't really sure about the sources of their statistics, or it didn't sound quite right, so I kind of omitted that, let people think what they want there, but uh, I kind of shortened it up a little bit because it was about a 10-minute video, and I did not want 10 minutes to, to the start of every stream, like, because most of my taxis don't last that long. Most of my taxiing happens in, like, five minutes. Um, today, we taxied for about, hmm, 18 minutes. Um, so that, that's a little bit different than normal, but yeah, um, Thule, Thule does that. Sometimes you can get similar stuff from Southwest, but you just, you, you've got to find, uh, captains that are familiar with the craft. They've been flying for a while. They need to inject a little bit of fun into the flight. And they're not afraid of, of uh, being fired. That last one's a real important part. But yeah, so um, this is us on climb out. And we're over Cairo. Oh, that is gorgeous. That is absolutely gorgeous. I'm saving a screenshot of that.
Oh. That is perfect timing, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, I'm just grabbing some screenshots while I can. <laughs> Alright, so if we wanted to look at a map, unfortunately it is all in uh, Arabic, so I can't actually read it, but I'm pretty sure that's Cairo, um, yeah, I, I have no idea. We're basically going to fly up this way, and then we're going to turn in, we're basically going to turn in here and then shoot straight into uh, Beirut here. So that's that's kind of the flight plan. We're going to come up around and then swoop in. I also should probably turn on our weather radar. Wifey, welcome to the stream. Uh, I'm going to lock the door. Also going to turn on our weather radar. System 1. We just finished climb out. Uh, let's see. We're over 16,000 feet. We can turn these off. Technically, I deviated by not turning them off before 12,000. Hey, man. Yeah, uh, I guess bank blue sky? Oh, blank blue sky, yeah. Yeah, the weather is kind of clear here today, so... I don't like the Colgate blue that the ground gets because of the early morning mist. But I do love the... Um, I do love the the sunrise. Okay, I just heard a thing going on. Subscribe for 14 months. Holy crap! Thank you so so much, Wifey. That's uh, a little over a year. I've been an affiliate for uh, almost two, not quite. So definitely up there. Um, I think you did have to unsub for a little bit. I think I took a break as well, which made it make sense. But thank you so much for that subscription. You've been here pretty much since the beginning. And I appreciate all the time that you're here. Also, it's really weird to look at my stream because it's several seconds delayed. So I'm sitting here flipping cameras and I don't see it flip for a second and then it'll flip over on my other monitor. <laughs> And it distracts me. But yeah, so today we're going to make it all the way over to here. Into Beirut. We do have uh, custom scenery in Beirut. Actually, all of Lebanon, I think. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, and I know I've flown out of there before. Uh, I, I think I've flown out of there. I, I don't think I've... You, no, no, I flew in from Greece, I think. From Athens. I think I did Athens to Beirut to Tel Aviv. And that was, that was a while ago. Okay, my thing got switched off of climb mode. I don't know why. We're over 18,000 feet. We're going to set to standard. I'm missing all of my altitudes today. Oh, my computer's about to die. All right, see you, see you later, man. Thank you so much for dropping by. Uh, also, if anyone is interested in playing Stream Raiders, let me know. Uh, I don't want to start it if nobody's playing. But, um...
uh, because I don't want to have to have us all start over again. But I uh, do have it prepared and ready to go, I think. Dream Raiders? All right. You do that. By the way, official Iraq Attack uh, bottle. The Squeak of Hydration water bottle. This one is uh, metallic blue. Works really, really well. All right, uh, so let's get Stream Raiders going. It updated, but it didn't reopen. All right, let's get this started. Units passing through Cacti take 50% more damage. Nice. I did not know that. Okay, they have a limited time event. Retrolandia. Interesting. wonder what that's for. I have to get my earbuds turned properly, otherwise they hurt a bit. Come on, okay. That's, that's fine, I get it. Hello, Stream Raiders. Stream Raiders. I'm clicking OK. Also, the uh, official Iraq Attack shirt. This is the T-shirt. I've also got a, uh, a polo. You can kind of see the logo. Um, I got a polo down here. Very similar. Uh, except for the logo being in the top left breast corner. But... Uh, it's, it's really nice shirts. Um, I've enjoyed wearing them. I've been wearing them quite a bit. Yes, I am that guy that wears his own merch. <laughs> Is it blue? Is it gold? Oh, no. <laughs> well, that's a good question. Is it blue or is it gold? All right, so we are starting. Enemies will be revealed over time. All right, so I'm going to throw in, let's go with a mage. And I'm going to throw it right down at the bottom. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you can go ahead and click that link in chat, and that will take you directly to our stream raiders. And then I'm going to have to look at my stream labs and see if I have a thing for stream readers. I think I do. There's the countdown. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got one. Okay. So we are flying. We are at 29,000 feet. Um, so there's also another type of game that I've been considering throwing on for us, uh, during cruise. Uh, I'm not entirely sure that it's the direction I want to go. It is kind of copying another streamer, but there is a game called, uh, I think it's Endless ATC. And it's basically you just do air traffic control, trying to, to control, uh, aircraft landing at an airport. That's it. And you just guide people in, guide people out, and you make sure that you don't have incursions and stuff like that. And it could make something interesting to do while, you know, while we're at cruise and we can't do much. That's not going to work to find a good place to put this where I can consistently read it. I'm going to put it here. Uh, 
Oh no. No, not Toga. Not Toga. The problem I'm running into is anything that keeps it from slipping down is going to make it slide. It is going to um, prevent me from seeing the bottom of the chat. That's the problem I'm running into. Looks like we have a hell of a crab angle. What are we flying at? Ho! Oh! Okay, we've got an 85 knot crosswind. <laughs> oh, and it's a headwind. Okay, that's gonna that's gonna make things a little slower. I don't know how long this is gonna be, by the way. I have no idea. Um, let's see. I can look at this. My current flight. We are 15% of the way through the flight. It's estimating. Is it estimating? Where is it? Okay. Estimated time on route cannot be correct. It says 38 minutes. There's no way. If it is, we'll just fly to Tel Aviv afterwards. But I don't. I don't think that's accurate. So we're about 500 feet, 400 feet short of our cruise altitude. Drinking from my squeaky hydration bottle, like mine, only without the sparkles. The official squeak of hydration water bottle, and I apologize for just banging the shit out of my mic stand, which is probably deafening to you guys. There's a little bit of a squeak. It's not as much of a squeak as the old bottle was, but it's getting there. It's getting there. So we're landing on runway 03 in uh, Beirut. Oh, they got it squeaks. It wouldn't be a squeak of hydration bottle if it didn't. Does yours squeak? Because mine didn't squeak for a long time. I used mine a lot before it started to squeak. Not yet. At least mine is. <laughs> At least mine squeaks. just came in yesterday, um, but at least it came in. I'm not sure what's going on with your Christmas present, which, the second one of which, the last I checked, was still stuck in, uh, in, uh, New York, uh, Jamaica, New York. And let me tell you, that doesn't make me happy. I'm going to give them a couple more days for it to move, and if it doesn't, then I'm going to get in contact with the seller on Etsy, 
and see what they can do because that needs to be kicked loose. This is the second time they've lost it. And if they continue to lose it, I'm going to lose it. Ooh, look at that. Sweet 78 frames. Oh, boy. <laughs> In Jamaica, New York, USPS is garbage pit of the postal system. Apparently, it's it just everything dis fucking appears. But what can you do? I mean, it's New Year's, it's the holidays, and COVID. It's New York also. New York is just a garbage fire right now. Um, honestly, I'd be, I, like, at this point, I'd be willing to pay extra. Just, just FedEx it. Just send it through FedEx, and I know it'll get there. I have lost fully, like, half of all of my packages that have been shipped via the USPS recently. Listen, dumpster fires are fun, but they smell to high heaven. You want to be ag admiring someone else's dumpster fire. You don't want to be nose deep in the waft. So yeah, dumpster fire is great, and it's fun, and, and you enjoy it. But if you're nose deep in it, you, it's not so fun. It's kind of, it's kind of, kind of awful. Actually, this might be just like a half hour left, maybe an hour. I mean, I guess that does put us in the right time frame. I mean, that'll, that'll put us in probably close to about seven. Uh, so maybe 6.45. So it's saying it's 30 minutes, but then you have to add like 15 cause, because it's assuming that we're going to continue moving at the same speed that we're currently moving, and we're not. We're going to slow down as we come to our descent. So normally, I've got some things messed up here. Like, normally, uh, you start this when you start to taxi, and then you stop it when you reach the, uh, when you reach the, uh, runway. And then this, you start as soon as you start the engines. Because this is how much fuel you've used. And this is how much you taxied. Uh, unfortunately, I kind of got it backwards. <laughs> Because I started this one as soon as I started, and I was like, wait a minute, it's supposed to be this? Because I haven't done this in ages. Like, it's it's probably been, what, three weeks? Three or four? I'm not sure. It's been a while. Um, but look, I got, I, I got scared because... So, okay, we're going we're gonna to do the little bit of political thing, right? Now, this isn't about politics. This is not taking sides. This is not partisanship. I'm not endorsing anybody or suggesting who's right and who's wrong. What I will say is the things that affect this stream. So, um, recently a bill was passed through both houses of Congress um, to give Americans $600 of COVID relief, which is a laughable pittance. Um, and really it's just a slap in our faces, especially since we have to continue paying taxes anyway. Like, gee, thanks, you gave me the money to pay you. Um, anyway, point is, uh, they passed it as an omnibus. So there's 6,000 pages to this bill that's supposed to give us our money to help us survive. And there's all sorts of shit tacked onto it. 
all the things that were not popular that, you know, politicians were like, well, this is definitely going to pass because it's COVID relief. So I'm going to throw my unpopular shit with that so that it'll pass too. And um, one of those things was a measure that was defeated a few years ago, like six years ago, uh, or maybe ten years ago. I don't know. I don't, I don't keep up with it. But uh, it was defeated previously. That makes... Um, it doesn't... It's not meant to make streaming video games illegal. What it's meant to do is to stop services that are illegally offering copyrighted material, like, say, uh, sites that stream movies without paying for the licensing, or that stream audio without paying for the licensing, right? So, for instance, Twitch might come out under the crosshairs because of people who stream on the platform using copyrighted material thinking that it's like YouTube where they'll just take the money and it's okay. And that's not the way it is on Twitch. So YouTube actually pays for um, for a license that covers the platform. It doesn't cover you, but it covers the platform. So if you post copyrighted material on the platform, they take the money and give it to the original copyright holder, you get nothing, and they're safe. And so, in effect, it's fun. Uh, nobody, nobody's going to come to blows about it. Well, that may not necessarily be true anymore. Now, this measure very vaguely says that um, a platform sharing copyrighted material is guilty of a felony. Now, depending on, how, on your interpretation of that wording, of that phrasing, this channel might be considered a platform. It is my platform. The platform by which I speak to you. Right? So it could very easily be interpreted that I am a, am a platform that is sharing copyrighted material in the form of video games without permission. Um, now, I may not be sharing them in their original medium, but that's not a part of the law. It is definitely written with the intent of grabbing a platform, like a service, not an individual, but it could be interpreted that way, and I have to look at it as a weapon that may eventually be aimed at me. Um, so, that's why I took a big old break at the end of 2020 because I wanted to make sure that I got as many of my ducks in a row as possible before the start of the new year and to find out how this particular bill was going to go. In the end, it turns out even my announcement on my Discord was incorrect. Um, it turns out that the amount was not increased from $600 to $2,000. Uh, they just passed it anyway and then reneged on the deal and said we're not going to change it like we said we were going to and um, so now that that is a law um, it is possible however unlikely that I may be uh, brought up on charges on felony charges for streaming video games it'd be the stupidest thing to be in prison for but um, I initially decided to try my best to comply with the law. I contacted Laminar Studios. They were the, the developers of this game, of X-Plane. Uh, they were more than happy to give me their endorsement that I am more than welcome to fly the sim on stream. The only thing I can't do is do things like recording videos for purposes of teaching a distance um, flight school. I could not do that, which is fine, because I don't even have my PPL. I can't train anybody. Um, so, uh, 
they were more than happy to give me permission. I contacted Capcom because I also do Mega Man X on uh, Wednesdays and Fridays. Capcom was not so forthcoming. Capcom decided to tell me basically to fuck off. More correctly, they told us that they don't give permission to stream expressly, per se. But they did tell me that if I did run afoul of, uh, of, of YouTube's content guidelines to go ahead and appeal the decision because they wouldn't fight it. So, I mean, in, in fact, that is permission to stream it if not in phrasing. Um, it was a very weird thing for them to do. Um, so, I had myself a good long think about it. And, uh, I don't think, first off, I don't think it's likely that they'll come after me to begin with. I mean, let's start with that. I don't think it's likely. At least not anytime soon. They're going to they're gonna give people time to get used to thing, this being the new way things is done. Right? But... Uh, after that, I'm not quite so sure. I think that they're going to give people a few years. After that, they're going to... They're gonna, maybe start pushing things further than you need to go. Um, but I have decided that in the, uh, in the unlikely event that they do that, come get me. Um, this is entertainment. Right? I'm not streaming X-Plane. You're not here for X-Plane, right? Like, Explain is what gets you in the door, but there's a hundred streamers streaming Explain. Right? You can get that anywhere. You stay here because of me. <laughs> the lore here is very deep. I mean, it's not it's it's not lore. I mean, this is just The lore of 2020 is what it is. It's the lore of 2020, which is all we really have. I mean, let's be honest. Nobody really knows what the fuck happened in 2020. Most of us didn't leave our houses more than absolutely necessary. Um, we're all relying on other people to tell us what the fuck is going on in this world. Uh, you know, nobody has any clue. We're, we're all going off of third-hand information. Um... But yeah, like, if they did come after us, fuck it. You know, pirate radio. Uh, uh, this is... You're coming from me. This is only the background. Uh, and I need to input destination data. Uh, uh, performance. No. No. Yes, performance. Uh, I remember why I was going there, because I need to grab winds. For descent, too late. Oh well. Okay. Performance. Approach. Get our weather. Um. Right, we are. Oh, two, one. The Q and H temperature is going to be. That's a terminal area forecast. Seven degrees. Winds are variable at three knots. Decision height, 200. I'm gonna go down to 3,000 feet. <clears throat> Rivals, performance approach, winds we don't have, altitude is descending, speed break half if needed, which I don't think we are, we are still above our descent profile, 
see that is this little green dot right here. Um, altimeter will set Q&H when we cross 18,000 feet. Landing lights at 10,000. I can go ahead and set my data on my navigation displays. LS when required. Oh, looks like we got a uh, redemption of stretching. So um, you're not going to be able to really see much. I'm going to be definitely off camera because there's like this camera covers a very, very small uh, region. But I'm going to stand up, move over here, and stretch my legs. That was a very well-timed stretch as my body decided I very much needed that. Okay. That was refreshing. <laughs> Despite the fact that I've been here over an hour in total, I'm still so very confused. Well, right now, okay, so we're descending. <laughs> Essentially, like, here, here's what you're looking at that tells us where we're at, what we're doing, right? So this is how high we are. 32,100 feet. This is how fast we're descending. Uh, 1,400 uh, feet per minute. This is how fast we're going, but that's kind of hard, bad as a way to tell right now because that's determined by how fast air is rushing into the pitot tube. And because the air is so thin up here, it looks like we're going a lot slower than we are. Our true ground speed... Uh, our true airspeed is 406 knots, even though this says like 252. How close am I? It looks like I'm about, uh, I want to say 20 minutes. Probably, I'll probably be on the ground in about a half hour. Um, so let's look over here. So Lebanon's like right here. So we're going to be hooking down in this way and then flying straight into Lebanon. Uh, because this here, this, this here country is Lebanon. I think this is Beirut right here. And we're going to land right along this edge, if I remember correctly. It's an absolutely gorgeous approach. Um... So we're, we're maybe, I do think we'll be on the ground here in about 20 minutes. Um, this tells me about 16 minutes, but uh, that assumes that we're going to continue at the same speed. We are absolutely not going to. We will be um, changing things up a little bit. Okay, let me see if I can find... Both charts. Look at the approach plate. All right, we're coming in on. Runway zero three. Via the Elec two November. In arrival, we're looking for Elec two November. I look at 2 November. Okay, so we're going to be coming in from Elica. Yeah. We're coming from Elica, heading to Bravo Alpha 402 to Ramallah at 4000. So let's change that to 4. And then I'm going to need to look at the approach plate for runway 03.
Alright, runway 03, so we're going to be Amala at 3,000. And at 6.3 miles, we need to be at 2,000. So I'm actually going to go ahead and tell it to go down to 2,000. It should stop at for the app. Yeah. You see how that turned uh, magenta there? That means that I am at constraints at 4,000 feet. So it won't let me descend past that. And in case anybody is wondering, yes, I did leave the um, seatbelts on the entire flight. <laughs> Alright, so if we do miss our approach, we're going to make a climbing left turn to 2,000 feet. Uh, our maximum speed is going to be 230 knots. We're not going to be worried about that. We're going to be at about 140. I did say... I did. I said I might miss the approach. I'm going to try really hard not to miss the approach. I want this to look just buttery smooth and professional. Um, it's not going to, but I can hope. Okay, so Elica is the start of our uh, arrival. Hopefully, how long do we have on Stream Raiders? Um, 30 seconds, perfect! <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to, real quick, pop up Stream Raiders. I need to move my light here so I can see it. Where, where'd it go? Why is, why is Stream Raiders not showing up? Well, that's why. There we go. Alright, let's transition this. And we'll start the battle. Look how easy and fast that's going down. Is it possibly because it's at the very, very beginning of the game? <laughs> Go to the Stream Raiders link, sign into your, your Twitch account, and put a wreck as your captain and play along. Absolutely. Um, I think that it's pretty fun. Um... So now I'm going to give one... One viewer is going to get three tanks, and it is... No, I'm not going to select one. I want it to be... Oh, grant one at random. And it goes to Sam's Angel. And I'm giving everybody as much gold as I can. I can take more if I want, but I don't really want to. I want to give you guys as much as I possibly can, especially since I get bonuses like these. And I got the bronze glitched paladin skin. So the link will happen when I uh, start a new fight, like this. So I'm going to place a... I'm going to go with a warrior. I'm going to put it up here. And then you should be able to place uh, place people for the next twenty minutes or next thirty minutes. 
or until I end the stream. Uh, I need more desk space. <laughs> All right, and we're back into the cockpit. Um, we're still not quite on approach yet. We'll be at 1021 on our way in. Hopefully you enjoy. And thank you so much for dropping that unit, Joe Pale. Hopefully, hopefully you are enjoying the game, the stream, the things. Okay, so once we hit Elka... Now, I'm going to wait until we hit uh, BA-402. Bravo Alpha. So... Let's see, can you see Beirut? Oh, it's too far in the distance. It should basically be right in front of us. Right in there. But you obviously can't see through the fog. Because it is still early morning local time here. It's uh, probably 8, 9 a.m. Alright, crossing 18,000 feet. I'm going to set 1021 is our Q&H. Landing lights will come on at 10,000 feet. So we're almost to Elica. That is the start of our approach. And this is a very short approach. A very short approach. Okay, so we'll intercept the glide slope at 2,000 feet at 6.3 DME. Um, the runway is going to be at... should be easier to see them. Precision height's actually uh, 462 for me. I'm looking for the runway elevation. Probably not much. There it is. Runway is 47 feet. Okay. Perfect. Exactly what I needed to know. Luckily, I was not doing something stupid like flying the entire way with my gear up or gear down or something like that. Windows, don't you do it? Don't you fucking do it? Speaking of, real quick, I am going to glance at my PCs and over here. Okay, I need to process some videos. Speaking of which, I do need to process some videos and get them uh, prepared for release. Uh, I have several in the queue ready for me to upload to YouTube, um, but I haven't been doing it because I took the end of 2019 or 2020 off. Um, I decided I was doing absolutely nothing to do with the stream for a couple weeks just so that I could stop worrying about it all the time. 
and it was very, very needed. All right, we're turning in. We are on approach. Go ahead and turn on our landing system, including our backup, in case anything goes out. Get something useful on the screen. Bravo Alpha 402 is our next waypoint. This is, this is the stream we always enjoy to watch. Hey, I'm, I will publish that. Don't you tempt me, my man. I know there's probably a little bit of, of, of sass in there, because... Uh, like, I, I'm, I'm aware. Like, this is fun for me, and I'm sure it's cool to see some of the stuff that goes on. But, like, I know it's not, you know, something amazing that, that everybody looks forward to all the time. Um, but I will publish that. Don't you tempt me. I will. And I will, I will absolutely attribute it to you, and you'll have to live with that for the rest of your life. <laughs> <clears throat> Pardon me. Did the stream readers thing not work? Do I have a command for stream readers? I need to make a command for my bot that says what the commands for my bot are. <laughs> that would be smart. But I'm not very smart. Obviously. All right, so we're about to get into the fun part, though. When we get on to our final approach and I kill the uh, the autopilot, that's where it gets fun, because that's where I can fuck it up. And uh, if I fuck it up, you guys are going to laugh. Uh, because, so I have fucked up several ways. Like, there was one time I fucked up by running out of gas. That was one of my first streams. I ran out of gas circling, uh, what was that, Peterson? I've done a few water landings, um, not intentional. Uh, we flew into Narsarswak, which has like a 14 degree grade, and I landed the wrong way on it. You're supposed to fly out over the water, turn around and land on it going the other way, because then you're rolling uphill and it helps you stop. If you land the other way, though, your nose downhill, and you're gonna t you're you're going into the drink. You're going nose first into the ocean. Uh, Nurse Arswak is in uh, Greenland. How do I run out of gas? Uh, well, bad planning. I didn't know how to use um, Sim Brief yet, and. Uh, Beyond that, I had to circle the airport like three or four times because the weather was really bad. It was it was a blizzard condition, and I was just circling the airport trying to get the right approach, trying to get lined up and stabilized. And then all of a sudden, I, and I wasn't watching any of my instruments or anything because I didn't know how yet. I was just starting to fly. So all of a sudden, it got real quiet. And then it got real dark. And I couldn't do anything. I couldn't drop my gear. I couldn't... Uh, I, I couldn't see my instrumentation. Couldn't see which way I was going. Uh, of course, now I know that I can, you know, pop this down. And at least have a heading. I know that there is uh, no backup altimeter, I think. I don't think there's anything I can do about the altitude. Um, rookie mistake. Yes, absolutely a rookie mistake. Um, <clears throat> had I had I been watching my fuel gauge, which is right here, by the way. Fuel on board, 3,000 kilograms. 
Uh, so three tons. I also didn't bring enough with me to begin with, so uh, my final reserve was not big enough to handle the flight. Might be able to start seeing the airport. There's part of the town. That's Beirut. At the airport. There's the airport. That's where we're going to be landing, right there. Well, the water landing... Though the water landing that you just kept going on the surface of the water... <laughs> yeah. But, okay, so here's the thing. If I tried an actual water landing in this plane, in this simulator, where I landed on the water, I could land as slow and as gentle as I wanted. It would still report me as crashed. That only worked because I landed on ground first. My stream raiders is the most slow, laggy thing in existence. It does that when it's loading. Uh, once it's loaded, it tends to be a little faster. But not a lot. It's, uh, but, I mean, thankfully, you only need to do anything once every five minutes. And then mine does all the rendering. So, it's not that big a deal if uh, it doesn't run as smooth or as fast as you'd like. Uh, okay. So, the more units that you place down, you'll get scrolls for them. And you use those scrolls and the coins that you get in order to upgrade them. Upgrading them just gives them more stats. Um, and then you can also participate in events like we're doing right now, and you'll get different units, or at least different unit skins, that will allow you to look a little different. It's kind of fun. Plane showing in red, you're a live target evasive action. No! No, do not. And don't make that joke here. That happened! I don't know if it was necessarily in Beirut... It was somewhere in this region, and it was not okay. It was a passenger aircraft that was absolutely shot down. Alright, so we're about to slow down. So we're hitting our D cell. Alright, we're going to get on to approach... Uh, speed is in managed mode. Speed brake as required. We don't need it. Flap 1 at 230 knots, which is going to start decelerating now. <coughs> We're going to turn in. Alright. 230 knots. Speed checked. Flaps 1. I see you approached on ILS tuned. Autopilot one and two. Localizer and glide slip capture, I think. We're just about captured on the, the localizer. Tell me the story. Oh, there was a. I think it was it was in early 2020. Uh, 2020, um, I think it was an Egyptian Airlines got shot down over Iraq, or maybe it landed in Iraq. It, it, it the pieces landed in Iraq. I'm not sure, um, but it was in the Middle East, where. Um, one of their surface-to-air missile sites. Uh, speed check flaps two. Um, one of their surface-to-air missile sites mistook a uh, 
a uh, I think it was a 737 for a military craft like a globetrotter and they fired on it and blew it up and there were very few survivors I don't think I don't think there were any survivors actually but I'm trying to remember a story that's you know hmm 10 or 11 months old. Right. Speed check. Flaps 3. I'm going to go ahead and extend the gear. Flaps full. Auto brake medium. Speed brakes armed. Lights are on, nobody's home. Run away, turn off, landing lights. Cursor's called, ECAM, and no blue. 2,500 feet. We have a seven knot quartering tailwind. All right, I can go ahead and give this to 4,000. At 2,000, I'm going to take over. Try and maintain that 700 feet per minute. Starting to slow down our ascent. Sorry, I'm, I know I'm getting quiet. There's a reason for that. This is a very concentration intensive part of the flight. Five knot crosswind. It's not a big deal. Actually high. Minimum. All right, here we go. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Redark. Ten. Five. Oh! Playing reversers. That was bad. Stowing reversers, annual braking, 
All right, we are on the ground. Very hard, very hard landing. That was not me being happy. All right, runway zero three. I'm going to take the first available left. This is probably going to be, what, Echo? Box drive. Oh, good. We're actually not far from the gate. All right. I'm going to clean up our flaps. Track spoilers. Um, All right, let's go straight into stand seven. Terrain on Indy off. Perfect. That was actually super perfect because my uh, audio just died. Hello, Mr. Ve Mr. Venzi. Uh, <laughs> my batteries just died on my earbuds. And I don't know if you guys can hear everything. Let me check here. You cannot. Let me switch it over. Fuck. Properties. Two speakers. All right. And that should be you being able to hear. Let's start our music up. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Ow. All right, welcome to the stream, Mr. Venzi. Appreciate the follow so, so much. You can hear, perfect. You're from Lebanon, and we just landed in Beirut. Um, I can't say it's the perfect, uh, I can't say it's perfect, but it is a beautiful scenery. Uh, with a lot of really detailed buildings. I mean, it's not perfect, like you can see, these are all just printed on the earth, but this is an awful lot of the skyline that is actually modeled. This is freeware scenery, by the way, uh, which absolutely floored me. Um, same, no wait, that's not what I meant. Yeah, you're not from Lebanon. <laughs> all right. So let's get this thing shut down, shall we? Um, brake fans can come on because we do have some really hot brakes. Um, APU is already started. Uh, park brake is on. Anti-ice is off. APU bleed can come on. Uh, runway turnoff lights are off. Uh, engine 1 and 2 master can come off. Runway turnoff lights are off. Wing lights can come off. Nav and logo or no wheel lights can come off. Uh, beacon lights can come off. Elapsed time can stop. So we had one hour, 24 minutes of flight today. Uh, fuel pumps can all come off. We flew from Cairo, um, and this stream will be going up on YouTube. You can check out my YouTube. Just search for Iraq Attack, A-R-A-K-A-T-K, on YouTube. 
Uh, do you have, how do you have fans for the brakes, but not for the passengers? So, uh, here where it says the APU bleed, this is all the air conditioning for the passengers. So we do have, uh, fans for the passengers. Uh, matter of fact, they get the cool air. They, the, the brakes, they just get normal air because fuck the brakes. <laughs> uh, transponder set to standby. Completely shut it off because we're not flying another sector. Uh, McDo's dimmed. Uh, let's look at our wheels again. Wheels. We've already dropped 60 degrees. That's not bad. But yeah, so right now the, uh, the air conditioning is being driven by the auxiliary power unit, which is... This ting right back here, you can see how it's jetting out hot air. That is just basically a really small engine that we can start electrically that is currently driving all the air conditioning and everything because the big Monster Dawn engines up here in the front are stopped. And the building is in the way. Uh, but yeah, because these are stopped. Uh, that's our Ford and Aft cargo bays. And... This just kind of cut the uh, the airplane in half when it connected. But uh, we'll call that good. Uh, so let's see. Securing the aircraft. Um, I'm not going to worry about these. They can go ahead and come off because we're not flying another sector. Parking brake is on. Adirs can come off. Adirs 1, 2, and 3 can come off. Exterior lights all off. Uh, APU bleed can come off. APU master can come off. Emergency exit lights can come off. Uh, no smoking can come off. And then batteries one and two and off. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Beirut in the lovely country of Lebanon. The home of Mr. Venzi. Uh, you'll have to let us know how well this, uh, represents, uh, the Beirut airport. I have, I have its name, I swear. Uh, da, da, da. Hariri. I, I, I know I'm butchering that name. You'll have to, you'll have to tell me how to pronounce that sometime, but, uh, Rafiq Hariri, uh, International Airport. Um, so that's us for this flight for this day. I'm going to wait just a couple more minutes because we've got one minute to go on Stream Raiders. So I'm going to just kind of jive here for a minute. And uh, so I'm going to go and grab you real quick the link to my YouTube channel. So if you guys ever want to see what's going on. If you missed part of the stream and you want to go back and view it, um, it's usually on a little bit of a delay. You can visit there. Unfortunately, until I get a thousand subscribers, I will not be able to get a custom URL. So I can't be like, you know, youtube.com slash Iraq attack like I would like to be. But that there will get you to the YouTube channel where you can watch all of our previous broadcasts. I'm not entirely certain if our original Lebanon, uh, Beirut to Tel Aviv flight was uploaded. That may have been before I was downloading all my streams and putting them online. Um, you'd be surprised how much time it actually takes to do these things. So I really hope you guys appreciate them. I, I hope that you like them. And like being able to go back and see and experience what went on. Um, I think it's fun. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a little bit shamefully honest and say that they are fantastic to sleep to. <laughs> I throw them on just before bed and I fall asleep to them. And I hate my own voice, but the drone of the engines is fantastic for helping me sleep. Um, okay, so the battle is ready. Let's go ahead and... Sorry, I gotta lean all the way over because I need my controls for OBS. Alright, so let's go ahead and do this last fight. 
And then I will let you guys go and probably send you over to uh, Rupert Digby, which is Nika's cat. He has his very own Twitch, and I believe he is currently live. At least he was a little bit ago. And look at that! We got, we got, we win! All right, what's in the chest? Everybody gets five gold, including me, and then somebody is going to get three tank and... 15 gold. Sam's Angels getting the gold and Trash Man Streams is getting those three tanks. That is going to help you get started, my friend. And I got three Warrior Scrolls. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do this. So, um, because I happen to be able to do it right now. So, if you see this little number one over here by your army, it's going to look a little bit different for you, but kind of the same. Uh, you can go over to your army. And then you'll see one of them that says upgrade like here. Uh, what that means is I've got 12 scrolls for warrior and it requires 10 to upgrade. So I'm going to go ahead and upgrade him and it's going to cost me 9 gold and 10 scrolls. And you'll see what it's going to do to him here. It's going to add 11 hit points. It's going to add 3 damage. It's going to give him 50% bonus damage versus armored uh, characters. Everything else doesn't change. So then I just click that. Boom. Upgraded. And now anytime that I throw a tank, it's going to do that. Now I, I, I get a scroll for every tank that I put down on the field. So if I put down a new tank, uh, a, a new tank, it will give me a new, it will give me a scroll. Um, that's not true for legendaries like this mage. The only way to get those is through events and chests. <laughs> yeah, he's just watching my little guy do the stuff. Yeah, it's pixels killing pixels, man. Um, and it's deceptively fun and, and entertaining, even though it very little are you actually doing, but I appreciate you guys being here so much. Um, thank you. Um, and I will see you guys tomorrow. I will be back tomorrow at, <laughs> I will be back tomorrow at 5 PM. Uh, same time I was live today. That's two hours ago right now. Uh, there will also be a countdown down below the stream. Hopefully it's accurate. Sometimes it has a strange way of getting half a day off. I'm not sure why. Anyway, thank you guys so much for being here. I will see you tomorrow. And then I will see you again on Friday. Friday, I stream three hours earlier. I will be here at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. So I'm going to raid um, Sir Rupert Digby or Rupert Digby. What? Mm, I need to make sure that I send you the right place. I don't want you to send you to a fake Rupert. Fake Rupert. So we're going to raid Rupert Digby. All right, guys. Thank you so much for being here, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. All right, and for those of you who are watching on the fantastic YouTubes, thank you so much for being here and for enjoying the streams. Please drop by my Discord. You'll see a link to that down in the description box below. Please drop a subscribe. I am trying so hard to reach that 1,000 subscribers mark so that I can have a custom channel name. Uh, that's the first goal. That's the big goal. That's what I want out of it. Um, so if you could hit the like button, hit the follow button, or pardon me, it's not follow here, it's subscribe. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment. Those things help. I'm trying to fight just, just so hard against the YouTube algorithm and hopefully come out victorious. If you guys like the content, let me know. If you hated the content, let me know. Tell me what I can do better because I am here for you. This is all for you. I don't make money off of this just so you're all aware this is all for you so if you're not enjoying something let me know i am happy to try and work with you to try and make things more entertaining and make you guys happier thank you so much for being here i will see you next time this is a rack attack goodbye